Hello guys, um, in this video, we're gonna um, continue looking at analysis of variance, ANOVA, also the Atuki-Kramer procedure. Okay. So let's start with the linear um, objective. In this particular uh, module, we're gonna look at um, recognize different situations in which we're using the by using analysis of variance. Nova. Understand different analysis of a variance design. So basically, as a researcher, you could design the experiment or your study and obtain the outcome from there. And we're going to look at the assumptions of the model. And then also, we're going to learn how to perform a single factor ANOVA and then interpret the result, mainly using Excel. Excel. And we're going to conduct and interpret the two key Kramer post analysis, meaning using the two key Kramer procedure to determine which means are different from the rest of them. We're also going to look at um, two factor analysis of variance, meaning two way ANOVA. Two way ANOVA. Uh, meaning with the two factors, a column factor and row factor. And we're going to conduct and interpret the two key Kramer post analysis outcomes and determine which factors are different from the rest of them. So that's the main focus for this module. So we're going to look at general an ANOVA analysis. So as a researcher investigator, we basically control one or more independent variables. Right. Could be a column variable, could be a row, row variable. We call these factors of the factor variables or treatment variables. So one factor could contain three or more levels, by right? meaning column factor may have four different categories. And, and row factor could, may have like two or more levels, meaning two or more categories. Right? So basically, in terms of experimental design, we we use the and hypothesis testing to guide our result of this testing to guide the result. So let's look at one way or one factor ANOVA. So also known as uh, completely randomized design and a one way ANOVA, and then. We basically have experimental units or like the data, right? Subjects are same thing as the data. You collect from a survey or from an experiment or study. Outside randomly to treatment and the subjects are soon homogeneous, meaning all the data have similar nature, right? Data have similar nature. Or they are same type of data, right? A similar type of data. Okay, that's the meaning of the homogeneous. And also only one factor or independent variable. In this case, and many we focus on the column factors. Um, we have different categories in a column factor. We have three or more treatment levels, meaning three or four, three or more categories in a column. So analyzed by one factor analysis variance, same as saying one way and over. Okay. So um, let me give you an example, right? One factor analysis variance. Um, we value the difference among the means of three or more groups. Um, example one could be extent rates for different like three different shifts, right? Or like secondly, expected mileage for five different brand of the tires. Okay, so the here the assumption is first assumption population are normally distributed. Um, usually, most of the populations in um, in a, in this um, category is always going to be uh, normally distributed right? by default. Yeah. Also, populations have equal variance. That's also kind of important. And the third one is the samples are randomly, or uh, you can say simple random sample. Same idea from the 
I made two to two simple random sample. And that's very, very important. Okay. Randomly and independently draw. Okay. So the hypothesis here is for one way ANOVA uh, HO is all the population mean are the same. They have the same population mean cross, right? All population mean are the same. And no variations it means among different groups. Alternate hypothesis, uh, not all of the population means are the same. So when that happens, then we can use the two key crema procedure to identify which population means different. Right, so two key crema kicks in to identify those different population means. Okay. So that means um, at least one population mean is different. And that is a treatment effect, meaning there's a difference between uh, um, different groups, right? different columns. And um, does not mean that all population mean are different. Maybe just at least one of them is different, right? That would be enough. So, um, so now how about this here will be all the means are the same. And let's say we have three different populations, population mean one, population mean two, population mean three, they are equal to each other. So all the means are the same. Okay, so now hypothesis is true, right? So we fail to reject each other. Because they are the same. Okay. And in this example, I, and in this diagram, you can see that they are not the same, right? Mean one equal to mean two, but not equal to mean three. So this is at least one means different. Okay. And also, uh, it could be all of them are different, right? Mean one is not equal to mean two, is not equal to mean three. So that's also um, satisfied that this at least one of them is different. So in this case, we reject HO. Meaning, not all population means are the same, right? So we are accepting the alternative hypothesis. Okay. And this is a typical ANOVA output, right? From the Excel, ANOVA output, ANOVA table, ANOVA output. Same concept. So this is one way ANOVA output. So the degree of freedom among groups will be the number of columns minus one. And we have some the square amount. Right? I show you the guys the detailed calculation in Excel from the last video. So the mean of square amount is the sum of the square amount divided by degree of freedom. Right? So this is sum of square amount by degree of freedom amount. Okay, so again, mean of square amount. Also, uh, within groups, uh, we have a total sample size um, minus uh, number of columns. And then we also know the sum of square within. Then the quotient of those two becomes mean of square within. Okay. And then if you're doing F value here, test statistics, F value come from mean of square among over mean of square within. So the quotient of those two numbers numbers. And here C is the number of groups or number of uh, columns. Right? Same idea. And the N is uh, some of the sample size from all groups, meaning the entire for the entire um, table, the total sample size. This is the um, total sample size. And then um, DF represents the group freedom. Okay. Now, um, one factor ANOVA, uh, first of all, we'll start with the test statistics. Um, so, step one, identify the null and alternative hypothesis. So, null hypothesis is always that all the population mean are the same. Right? And then, alternative hypothesis is that at least one, at least one population mean is different from the rest of them. Or you say you can say at least two population means are different. And we are using the test statistics, F value equal to mean of square amount 
over mean of square root n. And this indicates mean square among variance. Ms within represents mean of square within variance. And degree of freedom one, remember we are using the F table to identify the critical F values. And we need two degree of freedom. Degree of freedom one is the number of columns minus one, number of groups and number of columns on top. Degree of freedom two is the total sample size minus number of groups here, number of columns here. And based on those two and alpha, and alpha is always 0 0.05. That's it. We will stay the same for the entire course. Okay, 0 0.05. And using those three numbers, we'll be able to identify the critical F values. And then we compare the F statistics test statistics with the critical F values and then make it come up with a conclusion here. So F statistics, the ratio of the amount variance, MS amount, to the within variance, meaning MS mean of square within. And the ratio must be always positive. And then degree of freedom 1, C minus 1 is typically small. And degree of freedom 2, usually it's larger or bigger. Okay. So the decision rule here, or the criteria we are using here, criteria is and reject HO if a test statistics, this is test statistics F value, is bigger than the critical F values. We get a critical F value from the Okay, and otherwise we fail to reject or do not reject HO. Right? And this is a typical F distribution, what it looks like as a typical skewed distribution here on the right tail. This is rejection region, and this is a critical F value right here on the borderline rejection region and the non-rejection region. So the critical value separates the rejection region to non-rejection region. So if the test statistics fall in the rejection region, then reject HO. If the test statistics fall in the non-rejection region, then fail to reject HO. So basically we only have two different kind of conclusion here. All right, now let's look at a concrete example on the one way ANOVA F test examples. You want to see if the three different golf clubs use different distances, right? So you randomly select five measurements from trials on an automatic driving machine for each club. So at the 0 0.05 significance level, is that a difference in mean distance, average distance, right? So look at the club number one, and that's five. Distance um, recorded, cloud number two, we get five distance recorded, cloud number three, we get five distance recorded. Okay. And then we calculate the mean from the club number one by averaging those five numbers, meaning add up those five numbers and divide by bar. Okay, so come up with a 249.2. So club number two, we add in those five numbers. By five, we get the mean which is 226. And then for the third club, we add in all those five numbers and divide by five, right? And the average, the mean is 205.8. And then we also average those three average distance, right? So add up those three numbers. Dividing by three, we get 227, and this represents mean of all those three sample means. That's X double bar. Right here mean, uh, means mean of three sample means. Okay. Now you can see the comparison look like uh, um, 
second sample means closest to the, the mean of all three sample means. And the other two is like further away from the mean of all three sample means. And this is a typical um, of output, right? So we get three different clubs. Club number one the average is 249.2. Club number two, the average is 226. Club number three, the average is 205.8. And we can also get a variance you know, from the Excel outputs. Okay. And we look at uh, ANOVA output, right? So this is underneath, this is ANOVA output. Um, between groups or among groups. So we have a sum the square amount is 4716.4 dividing by degree of freedom we get 2358.2 that's a mean of square amount and within groups sum the square within groups is 1119.6 dividing by 12 we get 93.3 and then the quotient of these two numbers, 2358.2 by 93.3, we get 25.275. This is uh, test that is F values, right? And this is the critical F values. Okay. As you can see, this test that is much bigger than the critical F values. So um, we reject HO. Meaning, um, at least reject HO means accept um, H1. So at least one population mean is, is different from the rest of them. Meaning, um, at least one club is different from the other two clubs, right? In this case. And then again, um, for the Critical F values, you know, we can quickly look up from the uh, F tables, right? So we have a degree of freedom. Okay, let me quickly show you how to find that. So you go to our Blackboard course and click on tables. And yeah, before that, let me just point out. So degree of freedom one, EF one, is C minus one. Three colored minus one, that's two, right? And degree of freedom two, it's n minus c. So it's so five times three fifteen minus three, that's twelve. Okay. And alpha is 0 0.05. And using those three numbers, and we go to go to the um, F table from the blackboard course. So go to our Bravo course, click on syllabus, textbook, and tables, scroll down to statistical table, go to F tables, R5 equals 0.05. You can reopen these PDF files. So degree of freedom one is two, degree of freedom two is 12. So the intercept is 3.89. Right? So that's exactly what we see from the power point 3.89 right here. So let's continue from our PowerPoint here. Okay. So um, the conclusion here is HO is mean one, population mean one equal population mean two equal population mean three. Since we reject HO right at R5.05, also the p-value method is when the p-value is less than alpha. In our case, the p-value is very, very small. Is 4.99. This means 4.99 times 10 to negative fifth power e minus 0 0.05. That's this is 0 0.0000499. It's much smaller than 0.05. Okay. So p value less than alpha. So reject HO, meaning this is highly unlikely that because the probability value is so small. So this is highly unlikely. You can also say that this is an um, unusual event, right? very unusual event. So there's evidence that, so reject HO, there's evidence that at least one population mean differs from the rest. Okay. And 
we can use two equipment procedure to figure out which one is different from the rest of them in a second. So now we get to the two key Kramer procedures, right? Um, two key Kramer procedures will be utilized to identify the population mean that are significantly different from the rest of the um, numbers. So for example, we perform a two key Kramer procedures after rejection of null hypothesis. Only if we reject HO, that means at least one population mean is different from the rest, then we could apply the two key Kramer procedure. Then it allows a pairwise comparison, meaning we can compare absolute mean difference with the critical range. Okay. And this here, the critical range, we have a absolute mean difference. So this is a critical range, and that's a formula for critical range here, two key Kramer, critical range. And we are using a Q table. So this QU here comes from a Q table. Um, QU is value from studentized, studentized range distribution with a C and M minus C as a degree of freedom. And so this is degree, two different degree of freedom. And in this example, the C is three different clubs. M minus C is 15 minus total sample size, 15 minus three different clubs, that's 12. And um, alpha, also alpha, alpha is always 0 0.05. So based on those three numbers, you can find out this QU. That's very important element in calculating the critical range. And under the square root, we have mean of square within. And the mean of square within come from under my outputs right, right here. Mean of square within, in this case, is 93.3. So this is 93.3. And QU, right, I'm gonna quickly show you how to get to look up the QU in the Q table. Okay, again, um, go to our Blackboard course and we can look at the Q table here. Go back and look up the Q table, 2 key Kramer procedure, R5.05, open the Q table. And two degree of freedom, degree of freedom uh, numerator is going to be three, and denominator is 12. So the QU here is 3.77. On table three, degree of freedom from numerator, degree of freedom from the denominator, and have intercept, right? So it turned out to be 3.77. That's why you're going to see this QU uh, is going to be 3.77 in a second. We also need to know NJ and NJ price. So um, NJ, NJ price is a sample size from group J and group J price. You can view these two as two, um, two neighbor groups, right? Let's say group one and group two, right? That's two neighbors. So J and J prime just uh, kind of die, like sample size from club one sample size from club two, and in this case, they're both, they're both five. Okay. And once you're flowing all those three, uh, all those four numbers, we'll be able to get this um, QU, right? I mean, critical range. You see this critical range here. We'll get to the calculation in a second. But we um, basically use Excel to compute the absolute mean difference. As we see earlier, the, the mean for a club number one is 249.2. The mean for club number two is 226.0. And the mean for club number three is 205.8, right? So basically absolute um, difference, absolute difference here basically is we're taking the difference uh, between any two numbers. So population mean one minus population mean two. So you subtract those two numbers, we get 23.2. That's what they call the absolute mean difference. And then you're using the um, mean from the, uh, from the first club minus mean from the third club, 
you get 43.4. And again, it's absolute difference. That's why this result is always positive, right? Positive. And also, we find a difference between a, um, club number two right? minus um, club number three. So that's the, the difference is 20.2. Actually, earlier, you know, QU, right? We need three things alpha, degree of freedom one, that's the number of the clubs here, or number of columns here, equal three. And then M minus C, total sample size 15, three different. Clubs, right? One, two, three, three clubs. So 15 minus 3 is 12. So 3, 12, and then 0 0.05 gives us uh, QU. And once we have the QU, then we plug into the um, this critical range formula. So we calculate the critical range by replacing QU with 3.77, which we find it from the um, Q table. Mean of square within, it's 93.3, that's from the ANOVA output. NJ is 5, I mean club 1 has 5 results, club 2 has 5 results. Right? Or you can do club 2, club 3, it doesn't matter, right? Any two clubs should be good, right? the size of any two different clubs. Now, we compare the absolute mean difference with the critical range. So if the absolute mean difference is bigger than the critical range, that means at least one of them is different from the, the other one, right? The critical range is like the cut of color point or like benchmark we utilize to compare. If it exceeds um, the cut of point or critical range, then the mean are different. If, if, Within the range, then the mean will be this will be the same. Right? So, if you look at all three different absolute mean difference, they are all above sixteen point two eight five. Meaning, all three population means are different. Okay. So that's how we. So this is a token criminal procedure basically. Um, I'm going to show you a concrete example on how to run analysis. Get ANOVA outputs also a perform a two key criminal procedure. Let me see. Yes. So let me just open the uh, keep out of this and then let me go to the on my ANOVA. Also, I post this um, this example in our uh, Blackboard course. You can also find it from the uh, Blackboard course here. If you go to lecture videos and PPT, right? And you go to week three, ANOVA and the two key criminal procedures. You're going to see this file, one way ANOVA two key criminal procedure demo, right? Um, you'll be able to find a file and follow the, um, follow the procedure I'm about to show you and then understand the, uh, the whole process. Okay. So, Basically, right here in this example, we have four different suppliers: supplier one, supplier two, supplier three, and supplier four. So, and you can look at the number as a quantity of the textile produced, right? Or like quantity of textile produced. And look, let's see which supplier provides. Uh, the most average, you know, quantity of textile, right? And then, uh, first of all, um, let's get to the sample variance, right? Um, using an Excel formula, so we're going to do um, STD, no, it's variance, so it's VAR. Okay, the S is a sample, so VAR, the S means variance, sample variance. Okay, so you just highlight those five numbers. Okay, forget that. And this is sample variance 7.2. We're going to drag it. Get this. And double check the formulas. It's good, right? So, variance for this second supplier is this. And similarly, let's calculate the sample mean. So, you do average. Get a sample mean. Highlight those five numbers. Okay. And get that one of them, 10 again. Put the 
I highlight a green box here, and then you see a solid clause, right? Here, and the rest of the sample means. Okay, so that's a uh, just like the club examples, right? Golf club examples, we get a sample mean that's very, very, very useful. And I'm gonna verify these numbers um, using the uh, ANOVA outputs. Let me show you how to get that. Okay, so now one more time, you're gonna go to file and then go to options, right? That's very most important step here. And click on addings. In the addings, um, manage Excel addings, click on go. And uh, yeah, the pop-up window will show up. And I'm just gonna sh check the one of the next tool packs. In this case, will be the the first option. And that's tool pack. Click on OK, right? Because we need this um package in order to use the one-way ANOVA analysis. Okay. So now I'm um, go to data. Then once you Activate the package, right? Go to data, you're gonna see on the, on the side, you're gonna see this data analysis. And um, click on data analysis. Okay, and then um, scroll all the way to the top. This is ANOVA single factor. This is one way ANOVA, single factor, or one factor. It's a, it, there's only column factor here. We have four different suppliers. So it's a, a one way ANOVA here, click on OK. They're yeah, gonna uh, input range, click on this um, arrow here, and then highlight the entire table, including the title. Okay. Uncheck it, and then, uh, yes, labels in first row. Yeah, it is, we put in the labels. Uh, so we have titles on top. Half I go point zero five, then we're gonna pick output range right here. I'm gonna just paste it just underneath it. Okay, I'll put it on the B13 and go back. And once you have the proper selections here, click on OK. And we're gonna see all these Excel outputs, right? First of all, we're gonna see the average. So if you wanna see the same numbers, we can just change the amount of the decimals here to two decimal, as you can see, it will be, it will be the same, right? So if you look at the average here, and quickly just um, highlight the result here. If you look at the average columns for supplier one, okay. And let me put in all about this. And for supply one is 19.52, right? Matches supply two, supply three, supply four, right? So four different suppliers give us a different, um, um, different average. And also, we're going to look at ANOVA outputs here. So I'm going to quickly do a quickly modify this output here. Hold it, center, okay. Put in all borders here. Okay, now as you can see, um, some of the square between groups or among groups that are the same, so I'm gonna change to among groups, among those uh, four different suppliers, four different groups. And it's 63.28855, and degree of freedom is three because it's number of groups, four minus one, three, okay. and you divide in 63.2855, you get 21.0951, right? So that's a lot of decimal place here. And also um, within groups, uh, as you can see, some of the square within is 97.504. Degree of freedom, um, the total sample size is 20, 20 minus four, right? That's that's 16, 20 total sample size minus four different groups, four different suppliers. So degree of freedom for within group is 16. And then you find a quotient between sum of the square within and degree of freedom, we get this mean of square within 6.094.
And from there, we have a F value, F value equal to mean of square amount, 21.095 divided by 6 point mean of square VB, which is 6.094. So that's F value. And then critical value, it's um, 3.24 approximately. And then the P value here, the probability value here. Okay, so let me just quickly put in HO, right? HO, which one? So the hypothesis here is we are checking the population means. So the HO is population mean one equal to mean two and equal to mu three equal to mu four, right? We have four different, we are looking at four different population mean. Now, now I thought this, they are, they are the same. And for alternate hypothesis, at least one of them are different, right? At least one is different from the rest. And we look at this result here because the p value is less than alpha, right? So p value, first of all, p value, we're using p value method, p value is smaller than alpha. Okay, that means um, this indicates reject HO. So we reject HO. Meaning at least one population mean is different. So at least one population mean is different from the rest. So um, since we come up with this conclusion, then we can do a Tukey Kramer test, right? I'm gonna show you how to perform a Tukey Kramer test in a second. Right, but uh, yeah, so we get double double check. Also, you can use the critical value method because f value here is bigger than a critical f, test statistic f value is bigger than a critical f values. That means um, reject HO, right? So the test statistic for in the rejection region, reject HO. Yeah, so <sighs> reject HO, that means we apply the Tukey Kramer procedures. All right. So um, so for the two Kramer procedures, we, first of all, we need to know the absolute difference, right? So we have supplier one to supplier two. So that's calculate the absolute difference. So you do ABS here. And then the supplier one, this is the number of C nines for supplier one, D nines for supplier two, right? So we get that, okay. So this is a, absolute difference between the supplier one and supplier two. Okay. And we do uh, absolute difference between supplier one, ABS, between the supplier one and supplier three. Okay, like that. And then um, we follow this guidance, so supplier one to supplier two, supplier one to supplier three, supplier one to supplier four, two to three, two to four, three to four, right? So we get a, um, each group of a comparison here. And again, ABS then to supplier one to supplier four, supplier one minus supplier four. Okay. That's why we do the calculation earlier or if you do not want to do the calculation, then you can use the table here on ANOVA output to do the calculation, but I feel like this is slightly straightforward to look up the each um, mean values. Okay, now um, one more time, so supplier two to supplier three, so ABS, supplier two, this minus supply three. Okay, so get that number. Okay, then um, ABS supplier two to supplier four. Okay. And also the last group will be ABS absolute value. ABS means absolute value um, of the difference 
supply of three and supply of four. Okay. So you get all the absolute difference. We also need to calculate the critical range, right? Critical range here. And so in order to get a critical range, we need um, degree of freedom for numerator C, right? We have four different suppliers of the four. Okay. And a degree of freedom for denominator, right? So the sample size here, the total is 20. Five times four is 20. Four different suppliers, each one have five numbers, minus number of suppliers, four suppliers, 16, right? So based on those three numbers, we're gonna look up the QU from the, uh, from the table, from Q table. One more time, go to tables and scroll down to point statistical tables. Open the Q table, and this is the Q table here. So uh, degree of freedom for numerator is four. Degree of freedom for denominator is 16. So you're gonna have to intercept, and that turned out to be 4.05, right? So 4.05. And that is for the, um, one more time, 4.16, 4 4.05, right? So we get that. So this turned out to be 4.05 here. Okay. And we apply the formulas. Yes, right here, right? QU times square root of mean of square within by two. And NJ, NJ primes, they both five in this case, right? Each supplier has five numbers. Okay, so then we do the calculation in Excel. Okay, so the critical range will be um, QU, right? So QU is this number, okay? So we're gonna do the absolute reference by pressing, put a dollar sign in front of that. And this will lock the cell, okay? And yeah, and then multiply by square root. Okay. And the first parentheses is for mean of square um, within, right? And from the table here, mean of square, we, mean of square within, it's this number, okay, 6.094. Okay. And again, we'll put it up straight up here, double sign, lock the cell, double sign here, divided by two. Okay, then to by, by, it's gonna be one over five because adding one over five. One of the NJ is one over five. One of the NJ primes is one over five. And that's, that will give us the critical range okay. um, by basically applying the, the formula here, right? Okay, so get the critical range, let's see what that is. Okay, if you enter, we get that, 4.47. Now you can just drag it to get the rest of them. It'll be the same numbers, right? Critical range stays the same throughout the process. Okay. Now let's look at the result. So the result is, if the absolute difference is bigger than the critical values, that means supplier one and supplier two produce different amount of the textile, right? So you're gonna do, um, so we're gonna use a formula here called if, if formula. So logical test is basically, if this cell here, I5 is greater than um, this file, right? In this cell right here, J5, that means the conclusion. So this is a true statement. If that's a true statement, then E are different. If absolute difference is bigger than a critical range, those two means are different. Um, otherwise, if that's not true, that's false, then means are the same. There's no difference, okay? And you make sure both statements are putting the quotation mark, right? So the result come up properly. So as you can see, the first conclusion here, because supplier one and supplier two has different mean, right? Because absolute difference is bigger than the critical range. And then once you um, perform one of the tests using the Excel formulas, then you can drag it and rest of them. And the rest of that are the same. I mean, that means 
Um, okay, only supply one and supply two have different means, right? The rest of them have the same mean. Okay, so that's a that's our basic uh, conclusion here. Yes. So that's a everything on the one way and over also the um, two equivalent procedures.